Good afternoon, good evening. Yes, thanks for tuning in with Kite. Hey, hey, today we're going to have a, a discussion about leadership. We got a special guest today, Big Vitani. Hey, what's up, Kite family? Uh, I'm glad to be here to share you know, some of my thoughts and information and experience that I've acquired over the years. Uh, I feel like y'all family and y'all buckle on up. We're about to take flight. <laughs> yes, sir. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to be talking about leadership today. Uh, the qualities of a leader, um, how you can use that into uh, shit. <laughs> how you wow. use that into your advantage, and um, just go into a deeper meaning of what leadership means. Yeah. So, I, the first question I want to ask Big V is: Do you see a common duality trait between different characteristics of people that's leaders, like b regardless to race? Do you see something like chem a similar characteristic? Well, that's a good question. Uh, well. First thing is that I noticed that you know a lot of leadership people share a quality that they share is a belief in themselves, and uh, they're more like principled people. They have principles that they live by, and they ones that feel like they want to affect their environment they're in and the people that's around them. So that's one of the traits I know that they share. Uh, one of the things that I have come to understand about myself that put me in a leadership position. And I don't know if this is good or bad, but some of it had to do with ego. Like your ego, you feel that you, sh you, you should be more than you are or that you got the capacity to affect stuff around you. Yeah. And you start to exercise that in ways that would be beneficial to you and other people around you. That's deep. Yeah. What, what do you feel, cousin, as far as like some characteristics that you see amongst leaders? Well, I would say this. <clears throat> the first thing that I see is that um, leaders tend to actually lead. They don't like to manage. So there's a difference between leading and managing somebody. Managing is when you over that person and you telling them what to do, but you're not doing anything yourself. So you're just managing them. When you lead in, you on the front lines with that person. You on the front lines with that team. So you leading by example. You showing it how it should be done. And there's a distinct difference between those two. And a, a real leader is going to be there on the front line with you, going through the same trials and tribulations that you're going through. They're not going to leave you out there hanging. So I feel like that's definitely one of the key characteristics of a leader. Another uh, characteristic of a leader is that they listen. So you want to be able to listen to the person when they speaking to you because then they feel like you actually care and they're a part of a team. But when you're not listening to somebody and they go one ear out the other, then why would they give you their all into whatever you guys are doing? It wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense. So if you listen to that person and really give them honest feedback and collaborate with each other, then everybody's gonna wanna uh, come in with you, team up with you, and make something big happen. But the people that don't listen to people, no one wants to join you because they wanna feel like they're heard, they wanna be heard. I feel like a leader is somebody that can definitely listen to somebody. And one more thing I would say is that leaders can, can multitask and process issues because processing issues is when you know, you got something going on and something going on and with someone telling you something about this or somebody tell you something about that. And you can go ahead and give insight into what they should do and process both issues because processing issues is very important if you want to become a leader because you're going to have things thrown at you from all different angles. You're going to have to respond to all of them in a timely manner. So that's why I feel like a leader is... <clears throat> what about you, cousin? What uh, you think about? Well, something like relating to like business world, like a leader to me, well, you can you can um, associate it with outside the business world too. But I was gonna use uh, Steve Jobs as an example. Um, Steve Jobs to me was a leader because not only was he great, but he made those around him great. And uh, um, you know, he pushed people real hard. I don't really know his story, you know, per se, besides the documentaries I watch about him, but. For an example, what I mean by he make those around him great is um, uh, the the CEO of Salesforce, um, 
Mark Benioff. Yeah, so basically Mark Benioff was under Steve Jobs, but the knowledge that he gave him acquired, gave him the opportunity to become his own successful CEO. And, you know, to this day, he's a billionaire. And uh, from an interview that Mark Benioff stated was that um, – uh, he gave Steve Jobs the uh, the App Store. So when Steve Jobs was announcing that they wanted to do that, he already created it. So not only was Steve Jobs innovative and creative, but he allowed those around him to to excel. He never stunted that growth. So um, to me, that that's a real uh, a real component of being a leader is not only are you great, but you got the ability to make those around you great. So I feel like with Kite, like when we do take off and become a, a big force in the world. I wanted to, to have the opportunity to allow people around us to be great too, and not just us. We don't like to me. Um, outside of business world, like a leader should never be the one shining and not having everybody else around them shining. I feel like everybody shine because when you when you the only person who benefiting off something that that causes envy, it causes jealousy. But what you should do is allow everybody to have equal opportunity for greatness. So that's that's a characteristic of leadership to me. Yeah. I understand that clearly. That's well said, Thank you. And also on a, on a, on a more on a more personal individual level, um, a leader wants to be an example of whatever activity you're in or whatever you're doing, whatever the highest level of respect or honor that you bring to a person's view of how they see the activity taking place. You want to be the ones that have actually take the reins. You know what I'm saying? You want to step up, you know what I'm saying, and take the reins, you know what I'm saying, and be the example for everybody else that's, that's, that's following behind you. And not following behind you, actually, but everybody that's participating with you, you know what I'm saying, in an endeavor. Y'all all got together and said, we're going we gonna to all participate and develop and build, you know what I'm saying, what's something that we're doing, right? A leader always want to be an example of the very epitome of whatever the highest principles, a level of respect, that's that's being given or shown, you know what I'm saying? They want to embody that. You know what I'm saying? And then when when they embody that, you know what I'm saying, they want to infect those around them. You know what I'm saying? To feel that it ain't it's not just the activity we're doing, but we we building a, a, a family. You know what I'm saying? We got a bond that we share, you know what I'm saying, for our propensity to move forward, advance, and be productive. So that's kind of like uh what I want to say. Uh I'm not. I'm not that good at what we're doing right now. But <laughs> recording on <laughs> recording on this podcast, I usually flow a little better. I got to kind of get used to this, y'all. But as the time go by and I talk more, I'm be able to relax more, and I'll be able to, you know, what I'm saying, release more information that I do have that I want to share with y'all. Yeah, I I I, I like that. I like that, Dad. I, I feel like I feel like you explained yourself very well with that, and um, our our listeners could definitely interpret that and understand that. Um, I just want to say that, you know, a, a leader can come in all shapes and forms. Um, you know, you could be a leader as a parent, as a parent in your household, be a leader. Like, for example, when I was younger and, you know, I didn't really know nothing. You a kid, you don't really know anything. You just want to play, you know, do whatever. And, and, you know, I really look at my dad as, as a leader because he, he always he always taught me and uh just just always taught me what it what it means to be a man and what it means to lead because he would you know help me with my homework uh he would let let me know life lessons that I would need to know in the future and I'm very grateful for that because I learned so much from him and a lot of people don't have that and you know they they grow up and they don't really know too much and they got to learn that from other people or they got to learn that from the outside or whatever they, wherever they learn it and so i feel like it's very important um if you're into a leadership position to also teach the people around you to become leaders and not to become followers because you don't want people to become followers when they under you want them to become leaders and lead the next generation or the next group you don't want them to be followers you want them to lead so i feel like that's very important if you can if you're a father or or you know a brother or a sister or whatever to show your little brother or your little sister the people under you what it means to be a leader so then they can go on and affect the next generation to become leaders and i, I think that's very important 
Yeah, that was that was a good observation of it. Yeah, that, uh, was, that was a good observation. Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to say uh, how it's detrimental that it's um, detrimental that you sh that you don't stunt people growth. The reason being is this: this is an example from um, from uh, Xerox. Xerox. I forgot. I don't know how to pronounce it. Does it's photocopy machine people? <laughs> so yeah, Xerox. Yeah, 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 Xerox. Um, so basically. So basically, they had a branch of their company where they allow people to be innovative. I can't think of the name of it. But so inside of that branch of the company that didn't make uh, photocopy machines, they came up with the first computers, the first home computers um, outside of major companies like Microsoft and Apple. But they created the first graphical interfaces, the mouse, and um, revolutionized the way we use technology today. Is, is, I think they had um, a form of internet too. But uh, long story short, what, what hurted their company was that they couldn't allow individuals to be great. So what they did was when they Whoa. came when they came with that with the innovative technology, they said, "Nah, we don't make money doing this. We're going to do this. We're just going to make photocopy machines because this is how we get our income." But mind you, if Steve Jobs would have said, um, if Steve Jobs would have said, "Nah, Mark Benioff, uh, we're not going to mess with that app store. We're going to do it the way I think we should do it," then it would have never been. Um, uh, 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 the first company to reach a trillion dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. So w what mm -hmm. I feel like is it's very, very important to allow people to grow because they might outgrow you. But mind you, it's not you being outgrown. It's the company growing to the next level. So that's something why I feel like it's detrimental that you um, allow people to grow. Yeah, another, th another thing about growth is a leader also uh, introduced people sometimes to the skills or the gift that they have or the strength that they have inside that they didn't know they had, you know, so they kind of introduce them to it. Uh, they make them aware of the greatness. Uh, let them know that there's no limits except the ones that you put on yourself. You know, because a lot of people don't know that they put limits on their, on, on their aspirations on themselves. You put ceilings on it, you don't know you're putting ceilings on it. You know, you uh, we all have spirits. And you know we live, we surrounded with flesh, and we live in the flesh. But you know what I'm saying? It's it, it's it's animated by your spirit, and your, your spirit guides you. You know what I'm saying? So the things that you do in life it should be to strengthen your spirit. You know, sometimes to get you ready for a leadership position, you got to have the, the ability to control your urges, uh, your the temptations that come in your life. Anything that will basically take you off a track, once you set, once you set your, your uh, program in place, you know, so a lot of stuff will come in, like temptations, you know what I'm saying, to take you off your program. But if you build enough discipline in yourself, you know what I'm saying, then you will be able to have the ability to keep your program on track, keep yourself on track, you know what I'm saying, and build up, you know what I'm saying, the obstacles and temptations, you'll be able to overcome them. You know, a lot of people don't know they have it because they don't know that they're not they're not in control. You know what I'm saying? But some a lot of people is not in control. Your appetite is in control. You know what I'm saying? You got to be the one to be in control of your appetite. And there's a lot of ways to do that. And and eventually, uh, not today. We'll get into it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it back over to my cousin and my son. Well, yeah, that's that's definitely some uh, the spirit versus flesh. Um, I really like that that analogy. That's that's a good one, because um, of course you know a leader has to be able to control his uh, urges, control his emotions, and in order in order for you to do that, you you have to embody that. This actually hold up. This is one thing that I, I wanted to say because if you look at all the greats, all the leaders of this world, if you look at Elon Musk, you look at uh, Steve Jobs. You look at uh, Wozniak. You look at um, all all these great great leaders that that we that we praise. They all have one thing: a schedule. Because look, if you if you look into their background, you will see they all have a set schedule and the way they do things, and they don't let anything take them off that schedule. Because if you let some take you off that schedule, you will let some take you off of anything. So you need you definitely need a schedule. I think a leader has a schedule something that he follows like for example i was reading into uh one of the ceos i forgot uh what's his name but 
he had a schedule where he woke up at 5 a.m. He exercised. He meditated. He read a book. Then he got his day started with his work. He did whatever. He came home. He educated himself. He did more. A lot of people don't like to educate themselves. They like to entertain themselves. And that's that's where you're going to have to separate yourself. If you want to be a leader, you got to educate yourself, not entertain yourself. Because everybody else is doing that. Everybody else is entertaining themselves. But if you educate yourself instead of entertain yourself mostly, then you're going to stick out. Because that self-education is very important. You need more than that standard traditional education of going to school to be successful. A lot of the people like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk said, I didn't go to Harvard, but the people I worked for did because self-education is more important than the traditional education itself because you need to keep reading up on stuff that's going to teach you about business because in school, they don't even teach you how to do taxes. They don't teach you how to do anything business slash finance related. So a lot of people don't even know how to do it. So that's where you got to step in as a leader and educate yourself. So then when you educate yourself, you can pass it on to the people That's under right. you and they can pass it on to the people under them yeah, or next to them. Always upgrade. <clears throat> yeah, I want to elaborate on what Lil V said. So basically he was saying you got to educate yourself. I don't know where I read it, but some I read it somewhere. They said the average CEO reads like 52 books a year. Ooh. So if the average CEO reading 52 books a year and, and roughly got a, a net worth of $1 billion, where do you see yourself in this world if you don't even read one? So uh, that's just to elaborate on that. But I wanted to uh, bring a topic on something that Big V told me. So um, uh, I forgot he told me that uh, some like you got to have a boundary between leadership and the people um, that's a part of the organization because... Um, because if you playing video games with the people that looking for you for guidance and inspiration, they not going to look at you as a leader. They're going to look at you as your friend. So I wanted him to elaborate more for, for you guys to understand the, the boundary of separation that you should have. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. My understanding of that is if you are a leader and you have a group of people that looks up to you and look to you, you know what I'm saying, for the inspiration, for energy, you know what I'm saying? You, you more or less like the motor inside the engine, and we all together as the car. Then you have to not not intentionally or negatively separate yourself from the group of people that you're leading. But you can't participate in all the act all the activities that's not productive or positive. You know what I'm saying? Like when you socialize and kick it, like say some when people entertain themselves. And they might have a few drinks. They might smoke some weed, whatever they do. You know what I'm saying? You can't really uh, participate in them activities with them and they start looking at you like one of them as part of their friends rather than a leader they look to for inspiration and for answers. You know, you have to be an example of whatever, every, whatever somebody think what a leader is and the things that you do, some of the things they probably can't do themselves. They don't have the discipline to do. But they see that it can be done because they're looking at you and they see that you do it. And they say, well if, well, if he can do it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? So you you the inspiration for them. you also the example. So you can't take away from that image. And when you start to participate in the activity that do, you start to tarnish. Without you even knowing, you start to tarnish and it slowly erodes the image that you have for the example that you're setting for a leader. And in order, in order for, we all leaders. And this all you got to do is... Put, uh, discipline yourself and d develop yourself to this level right there that you see me doing right now. If you can do this and you got it in you to do it, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how I did it. You know what I'm saying? I denied myself a lot of things that took away from my development. There's a lot of things I like to do that was I was in my own way. I would get